Okay, so in this video, I want to talk to you about um, borderline personality disorders, uh, people, and their intuition, their magical thinking. Uh, so I was in a relationship, it wasn't very long, it was only a few months long, but it was easily the most toxic and destructive relationship I've ever been in, and that's including, you know, a crazy ex-wife that I was with for 10 years. Um, uh, so um, they have magical thinking, and I want to talk to you about that. So my experience with uh, my ex who had magical thinking, uh, first let me give just a brief background. I'm a spiritual teacher, so I'm big on intuitive thinking and you know, I, I will do things like, you know, rune readings and things like that, you know, which involve intuitive thinking. I'm an astrologer. So I'm not I, averse to any of that. It's not that I have any prejudice to that or even psychic ability. Now, my experience is that most psychics are not psychic. But I'm not averse to any of that. I believe that there's this, you know, collective consciousness and we can feel each other and all that kind of stuff. So I just want to be clear, I'm not anti-intuition. Um, but the woman that I was with, um, when I met her, you know, I took her to be what she presented herself as, which was the spiritual person, and that she was highly intuitive. I like that idea because I like the idea of being with an intuitive mate who can feel your emotions and be able to be a good partner as a result of that. That all sounds really good. But what I've come to realize is that there intuition although they might have and probably do have very high intuitive skills uh, when it comes to predicting other people's feelings and actions and things like that um, the dependence upon their magical thinking to make all of their decisions is what i want to focus on and the woman that i was with made all of her decisions even ones on a daily basis you know, like, should I be with my boyfriend or should I break up with him? I mean, she would ask herself these questions on a daily basis. And um, uh, she would um, she would completely make all of her decisions based on what she called her intuition. And let me give you an example. You know, there was one point where I remember, you know, looking back on it, I can't, I, you know, how devaluing it was. At the time, I was so in my addiction of her that I wasn't feeling it. I was just hoping she was going to take me back. But I remember her sitting there going, yeah, and I checked with my intuition on a daily basis to see if we should be together. And my intuition is saying, no, not at this time, even though I'm attracted to you and I really like you and you're, you've got all these great qualities. Now, I'm thinking that she's, her intuition I'm thinking her intuition like I think of my intuition when if I'm really thinking about something, I'll be thinking about something in particular and, you know, I'll be thinking about data and experience and and then I'll be listening to the feeling I have around the data and the experience that I'm thinking about. But for her, it was literally just whatever feeling. So I asked her, so how do you check in with yourself? She says, I close my eyes and I ask the question, should I be with Mike today or not? And I keep getting this dark feeling. It wasn't based on any knowledge or experience or any rational thinking of any kind. It was just purely based on the feeling that was going through her at the moment. And then she said, but you know, I don't know if that's just my fear or not. And I said, well, you know, why don't you just do what you want? and then make what you want to have happen and work through challenging feelings and go after what you want. She says, oh, that sounds like a good idea. Of course, she didn't end up doing it. Um, this last time that she's broken up with me, which has been permanent because I've broken off all contact. She has too, but there's a good chance she'll change her mind and try and get back with me later. But I've blocked her every possible way. So this is it. But this last time she broke up with me, it was based on the fact that I had said something to that effect in a normal conversation. Like, well, you know, with my intuition, I check in with it. But, you know, if I want to do something, I can override that fearful feeling and follow through and create something. And I said, why don't you try and do that? Because you can't, you know, always listen to your intuition. 
and I even said something to the point that, you know, borderlines do have this magical thinking. And so, you know, think, just think about whether or not that's something you want. It really just made, it was just nothing more than a suggestion. That turned into um, uh, the next day, her calling me and saying, I have to break up with you. You're trying to destroy my, um, my, uh, my self-esteem. You're attacking me. You're telling me I'm crazy. You're being, the, and she turned me into this horrible person. And that, after that, I, it was that when she, you know, launched at me so hard and when I was so vulnerable and needed her the most that I realized, I finally realized um, she's incapable. She's incapable of any self-awareness and incapable of any empathy that she will never stop hurting me. It will never end. And so that's when I finally broke out of my codependent um addiction to her and blocked her and so I don't even know if she's tried to contact me or not but if she does it's going to be very challenging for her to do so in any case the point is is that I want you to know that their their reliance on their intuition is because they don't have a sense of self so remember borderlines are created you know, in humans, when as toddlers, you know, like infant to four years old, they don't, they're either emotionally neglected or there is um, ambivalence. The, the parents show ambivalence towards them or give them confusing signs, you know, in terms of reward for their behavior. Uh, that, all of that potentially combined with perhaps even abuse or being in an abusive environment, an unsafe environment. This creates, um, the child is unable to bond uh, with their parents and they're unable to create an identity. So what ends up happening is that just like a two-year-old, the only thing they have to go on is whatever feeling is going through them in the moment. And so since their parents aren't there to take care of them, then they become completely hyper-focused on their intuition. Now they also, when it comes to their intuition, they develop a sense of heightened intuition at that age because they need to start being able to learn how to predict how their parents are feeling or whatever the abusive person is, is feeling so that they can protect themselves. So that's why they're constantly trying to figure out what you're thinking and what you're feeling. Now the girl I was with prided herself on knowing what I was thinking and feeling at every moment. And in the beginning, that was kind of cute and fun. But then later, it became a real problem because if I wasn't in a perfect mood, then her whole day would be shot. She'd have to go and meditate for three hours because I wasn't in a good mood, because I wasn't making her feel good, because I her mood was dependent on whether or not I was feeling good or her feeling that I was feeling good or her feeling loved or something. But because they don't have a sense of self to create their own identity, their own feelings, if you're not there to provide that for them, uh, they will reject you just for that alone. And so their intuition is, is it's a fear, it's a protection mechanism. It's the only protection mechanism that they have. And so if you try and take that away from them, they'll also break up with you. I found that out. So when I was just casually suggesting, you know, well, you know, you don't always have to go on that first feeling, you know, go by your, you know, your, your desire to create a life, which again, without an identity, you can't do that. That's why they can't hold down jobs or anything else. Um, so my just saying, you know, maybe, maybe you don't need to, to rely on whatever that feeling is, you know, just whatever feeling is going through you, that's not a very effective way to make decisions. At the time, I'm just, talking to another person. I'm not criticizing her. I'm actually trying to give her a counterpoint that might be helpful to her. But, you know, she was the one that was expressing doubt about it. So I just said, yeah, well, you know, that in itself to her after the fact was so threatening. And because she's so easily influenced by anybody who she's around, she's so afraid that I'm going to influence her to discard her intuition that um, she had to reject me. And not only reject me, but she had to create in her mind that I was this horrific, horrible person that was 
you know, tormenting her and attacking her and demeaning her. And, you know, none of that was true. So the point I want to make is that there, you know, when I also, when she said that, you know, one of the things that dawned on me, because this was the last time we were sort of, are we going to get back together or not? And she was sort of hinting that she was thinking about it, but wasn't sure. And when I found out that her entire process for deciding whether or not to be with me was based on her intuition and her intuition wasn't, I'd been thinking about it. And when I think about this aspect and this aspect, I kind of get this feeling and it makes sense. That's not what she means by intuition. What she means by intuition is I closed my eyes and I got a dark feeling or I closed my eyes and I get a happy feeling. That's all that she means. So her intuition is literally nothing more than whatever emotional stimulation is flying through her at the moment. And when I realized that that was the basis, I, I had already started my exit. That I was going to move away and I was just going to be friends and, you know. And of course, she intuitively, because she's got intuition, I think she sensed that and then, you know, beat me to the punch and broke up with me. So... That's the thing I want to focus on here. Their intuition and their magical thinking is not magical thinking. It's not psychic. Even if they have those abilities because they developed it out of a need to survive, it's really that they have no identity from which to base actions, decisions. It's all a two-year-old in the moment simply operating from their stimulations, just like a two-year-old. You make them happy, you dangle keys in front of them, it makes them happy. If you, you know, look at them or you have a scowl on your face, that frightens them and they don't want you around. It's literally at that level. No matter how f high functioning they are, that's where their intuition is coming from. And if they're making intuition, their decisions on being with you based on their intuition, guaranteed they will, they will, they will reject you. Guaranteed. It's not a question of if, but when. So there you go. Borderlines and their magical thinking and how destructive this can be in a relationship.